Okay, so today we're going to look at a case where we have a normal distribution for our data, our observed data x, with a known mean mu, but an unknown variance sigma squared. And we want to be able to show that a conjugate prior exists for sigma squared. So we start off by writing out our likelihood, which I have done already here. And to note that the convention is that a bold-faced xn describes x1 to xn individually. It's the product of each of the individual observations from this distribution. It's the standard form of a normal distribution. So we first of all want to tidy this up so we can see where sigma squared is properly appearing in our data and that gives us a hint about the functional form that we might be able to use for a conjugate prior. So we start off by saying our likelihood f of xn given mu and sigma squared if we knew sigma squared would be 2 pi to the minus n over 2 you've got a square root coming in there and it's being producted n times times sigma squared and we will leave it in the form of sigma squared min to the power of minus n over 2 again I'm just splitting these up because it will make life easier later on and then e to the minus 1 over sigma squared this is going to be a common factor and then when I put a product inside an exponential it becomes a sum so the sum from i is 1 to n of xi minus mu to be squared all over 2 so I've taken out the minus 1 over sigma squared from here so that is an alternative way of writing my likelihood function thinking about sigma squared as being the parameter of interest so then I think about the form of an inverse gamma distribution. So with an inverse gamma distribution, and if I was to think about what you would normally write it in, say x or y, we'll start off by, by parameterizing it in terms of y. So we have our inverse gamma. And if we were to say an inverse gamma distribution in terms of y could be written as f of y, alpha and beta being your parameters is beta to the power of alpha over the gamma function of alpha times y to the minus alpha plus one and then e to the minus beta over y okay but we are more interested in sigma squared so here we're going to, when we're thinking about our prior distribution we're going to write it in terms of sigma squared and so instead of our y's, we'll have sigma squareds because that's our random variable. So it's beta to the alpha over gamma of alpha sigma squared to the power of alpha minus alpha plus one. So that's minus alpha minus one. Either way works. Minus beta over sigma squared. I immediately start to see the connections. I ignore my constants, which in this case is this for the prior, this for the likelihood. I see I have sigma squared to the power of something, both negative, but that actually doesn't really matter hugely. And then I have e to the power of minus one over sigma squared times something else. That is good news. So I'm gonna say, let this be the prior. So then I recall that my prior times likelihood is proportional to my posterior. So I ignore the constants of this is just for convenience. So this is for my prior. The constant is beta to the power of alpha over the gamma function of alpha and then for the likelihood it's constant with respect to sigma squared that's the important thing to remember the only thing in this that doesn't depend on sigma squared is my 2 pi to the power of n minus n over 2 and then I multiply 
my prior, my likelihood, ignoring these constants together. So I get the prior times likelihood is proportional to right sigma squared to the power of minus alpha plus 1 e to the minus beta over sigma squared and I multiply that times sigma squared to the power of minus n over 2 e to the minus 1 over sigma squared the sum i equals 1 to n xi minus mu to be squared over 2. I group like terms together. So this is equivalent to sigma squared to the power of minus alpha plus n over 2 because you've got the minus out here so it's minus alpha minus n over 2 minus 1 so when you've got a minus grouping them all together it works like this and e to the power of 1 over sigma squared times beta plus the sum of i equals 1 to n xi minus mu to be squared over 2 and you'll see that this and this is proportional to the posterior so then I would like to be able to work out my constant of proportionality without having to do integration so I look at the form of this, well I have sigma squared to the power of minus something and then e to the power of minus 1 over sigma squared times something else. Oh look, if I look here, I have sigma squared to the power of minus something times the exponential to the raised to minus 1 over sigma squared times beta in this case, but it's times something. You say this is the same form as an inverse gamma. So this is an inverse gamma. With parameters. Instead of alpha, we have alpha plus n over 2. And instead of beta, we have beta plus the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus mu to be squared over 2. So then I can actually formally work out my constant of proportionality by replacing beta with this part and alpha with this part throughout. So I get my di prior distribution, given my data, and really and knowing my mean, in, it's formally in here, is Right, beta plus the sum of over xi minus mu to be squared over 2, and that's technically from i is 1 to n, all that to the power of my first parameter, which is alpha plus n over 2, divided by the gamma function of alpha plus n over 2. Then we have sigma squared to the power of minus alpha plus n over 2 plus 1 and then we have e to the minus 1 over sigma squared times beta plus the sum of i equals 1 to n xi minus mu to be squared over 2 and that shows that the Inverse gamma is a conjugate prior because it has the prior, the posterior as being the same form as the prior of a normal distribution with known mean mu but unknown variance sigma squared.